This is the return to libc attack from seed labs. We're given two files. One is the retlib.c. This is the vulnerable program that has the buffer overflow vulnerability. And the other one is exploit.c. This exploits that vulnerability, but one of the differences between this lab and the other ones is we're now given the memory address of the of the shell, the system, and the exit. That's what this lab is for. So the first one of the first things that we do is we go ahead and turn off memory address uh, randomization. With that, that's one of the built-in uh, protections against uh, like these vulnerabilities. What it does is it randomizes the addresses in memory, and again we can then go on and compile the vulnerable program with these parameters again these are other built-in countermeasures against these vulnerabilities go ahead and change its permissions exit root and now we can go and try find the exact memory addresses with the help of this file what this does is it gets the uh, memory address of the environmental variable my shell so we can go ahead and set that to be the shell and we can test to see that it worked alright it did and then we go ahead before we run it we compile it And now we have the memory address of the first uh, of the three that we need. And now we go into the debugger inside of Retlib. And then create a breakout main. Run the program. And print. Now we can go ahead and print the system. Print the exit. And now we have the two memory addresses. The two other ones that we need specifically for system and exit. And we can go ahead and input that. After having inputted that, we can go ahead and compile our exploit file. So run the exploit file, run the vulnerable file, and now you can see that we have root. You can see success, we have root. For task 2, we run the exact same thing, however, this time with the memory address randomization turned back on. And then we try run the exploit file again, the right lib file. You can see segment fault, segmentation fault, which pretty much means that the memory that we imp the exact memory address that we inputted, it doesn't line up with the one that, the actual one, pretty much. So now for the third task, what we do is we run the same thing again, however this time adding as well that we uh, remove the parameters that we first added in when compiling our vulnerable program. So we just do this, we can change the permissions, Oop. there we go, exit. Buddy Oop. disconnected from your channel. See that? address change as well P main R P system P exit so again edit that exploit okay now we can go on and compile our exploit program again to see what happens this time So now we can see that the system automatically detected this overflow, uh, I mean buffer overflow uh, attack happening and it aborted the program. But pretty much it um, shut down the program because it detected that it was vulnerable to this um, exploit. 